the archer, Danugaha Sutta, staying near Savati, monks. Suppose there were four strong archers, well trained, practiced, and drilled, standing in the four directions, and the man were to come along saying, I will catch and bring down the arrows let fly by these four strong archers, well trained, practiced, and drilled, before they have fallen to the ground. What do you think? Would that be enough to call him a swift man, endowed with the foremost speed? Even if he were to catch and bring down the arrows let fly by one archer, well trained, practiced, and drilled, before they fell to the ground, Lord, that would be enough to call him a swift man, endowed with the foremost speed, to say nothing of four such archers. Faster than the speed of that man, monks, is the speed of the sun and moon. Faster than the speed of that man, faster than the speed of the sun and moon is the speed of the devas who rush ahead of the sun and moon. Faster than the speed of that man, faster than the speed of the sun and moon, faster than the speed of the devas who rush ahead of the sun and moon. The force of one's lifespan comes to an end. Thus you should train yourselves. We will live heedfully. That's how you should train yourselves. Old age and death. At Savati, seated to one side, King Pasanadi said to the Buddha, Sir, for someone who has been reborn, is there anything apart from old age and death? Great King, for someone who has been reborn, there is nothing apart from old age and death. Even for well-to-do aristocrats, Brahmins, or householders, rich, affluent and wealthy, with lots of gold and silver, lots of property and assets, and lots of money and grain. When they're born, there's nothing apart from old age and death. Even for mendicants who are perfected, who have ended the defilement, completed the spiritual journey, done what had to be done, laid down the burden, achieved their own goal, utterly ended the fetters of rebirth, and are rightly freed through enlightenment. Their bodies are liable to break up and be laid to rest. That is what the Buddha said. The fancy chariots of kings wear out, and this body too gets old. But goodness never gets old. So the true and good proclaim. Mindfulness of Death, Maranasati Sutta. I have heard that at one time the Blessed One was staying near Narika in the Brick Hall. There he addressed the monks, monks, mindfulness of death, when developed and pursued, is of great fruit and great benefit. It gains a footing in the deathless, has a deathless at its final end. And how is mindfulness of death developed and pursued, so that it is of great fruit and great benefit? gains a footing in the deathless and has a deathless as its final end. There is the case where a monk, as day departs and night returns, reflects. Many are the possible causes of my death. A snake might bite me. 
scorpion might sting me, a centipede might bite me. That would be how my death would come about. That would be an obstruction for me. Stumbling I might fall. My food digested might trouble me. My bile might be provoked. My phlegm. Piercing wind forces in the body might be provoked. That would be how my death would come about. That would be an obstruction for me. Then the monk should investigate. Are there any evil, unskillful qualities, unabandoned by me, that would be an obstruction for me, were I to die in the night? If, on reflecting, he realizes that there are evil, unskillful qualities, unabandoned by him, that would be an obstruction for him, were he to die in the night, then he should put forth extra desire, effort, diligence, endeavor, relentlessness, mindfulness, and alertness for the abandoning of those very same evil, unskillful qualities. Just as when a person whose turban or head was on fire would put forth extra desire, effort, diligence, endeavor, relentlessness, mindfulness, and alertness to put out the fire on his turban or head, in the same way the monk should put forth extra desire, effort, diligence, endeavor, relentlessness, mindfulness, and alertness for the abandoning of those very same evil, unskillful qualities. But if, on reflecting, he realizes that there are no evil, unskillful qualities unabandoned by him, that would be an obstruction for him, were he to die in the night, then for that very reason he should dwell in joy and rapture, training himself day and night in skillful qualities. Further, there is the case where a monk, as night departs and day returns, reflects, many are the possible causes of my death. A snake might bite me, a scorpion might sting me, a centipede might bite me, that would be how my death would come about. That would be an obstruction for me. Stumbling, I might fall. My food digested might trouble me. My bile might be provoked. My phlegm. Piercing wind forces in the body might be provoked. That would be how my death would come about. That would be an obstruction for me. Then the monk should investigate. Are there any evil, unskillful qualities, unabandoned by me, that would be an obstruction for me, were I to die during the day? If, on reflecting, he realizes that there are evil, unskillful qualities, unabandoned by him, that would be an obstruction for him, were he to die during the day, then he should put forth extra desire effort, diligence, endeavor, relentlessness, mindfulness, and alertness for the abandoning of those very same evil, unskillful qualities. Just as when a person whose turban or head was on fire would put forth extra desire, effort, diligence, endeavor, relentlessness, mindfulness, and alertness, to put out the fire on his turban or head, in the same way the monk should put forth extra desire, effort, diligence, endeavor, relentlessness, mindfulness, and alertness for the abandoning of those very same evil, unskillful qualities. But if, on reflecting, he realizes that there are no evil, unskillful qualities unabandoned by him that would be an obstruction for him were he to die during the day. Then, for that very reason, he should dwell in joy and rapture, 
training himself day and night in skillful qualities. This, monks, is how mindfulness of death is developed and pursued so that it is of great fruit and great benefit, gains a footing in the deathless and has the deathless as its final end. That is what the Blessed One said. Gratified, the monks delighted in the Blessed One's words.